I definitely still write by hand. I, I write with a piano or I guess an electric keyboard. Um, so I, I definitely am like very much uh, struck by string quartets, solo music, duos, trios, orchestra music, that kind of thing. But as far as the music that I really enjoy writing, it has more to do with how do I take my Arabic heritage, my Lebanese and Jordanian background, and kind of rediscover it through the music that I'm writing every day. So for me, that's like the project. It's almost like going back to my past, but I'm doing it through what I know, which is how to write music, or at least I think I know how to write music. I'm not fluent in the language. I can't read and write in the language, but my blood is completely from that, from that area, at least according to this DNA website. I mean, um, so I just think it's interesting to also discover through music, which is also like this kind of uh, thing that you can't really see. Ancestry also in a way you can't really see. You can't really see my blood or where it was from. And the same thing with music, you can't really see it. So um, to kind of, go between those two worlds while I'm writing. For me, it's like, it's almost like the, this, the area where I could do so freely. It, it, there's no better time than now. I know so many composers now. I know so many musicians uh, that, are, that are doing this at a very high level. And I just wonder if it was like 200 years ago, if I would, if, if I would have the same network of people and the same amount of stuff that's going on you know it's like that's it's and if you look at it from like an inspiring inspiration point of view rather than oh wow i'm very envious of this person or i wish i was as good as this person i think if you look at it from the other side it's it's like really exciting in, in that way When I'm working with a soloist or I'm working with a small chamber group, I feel like it's really important to have that back and forth because that's my, that's my avenue for experimentation. And that's my way of like figuring out, okay, what are the new compositional tools I can use in my language? With the larger pieces, especially the orchestra pieces, I actually take the opposite approach because I have a feeling that, you know, in the long run, you know, these orchestras, they have such limited rehearsal time that I want to make sure that everything that I write is so clear that I don't have to ever explain it in person or on the phone or however. I want it to be like a piece that kind of just exists as if I didn't even write it. So my piece, Aroa, it means souls in Arabic. And this is my response to just living during the COVID-19 pandemic. I've never written a response piece like this, actually, my first time but I thought it was really important and it made sense with what I wanted to do in the piece. So this piece is an octet that I wrote for the International Contemporary Ensemble. And the main idea about this piece is how do I use the breath within the ensemble? What does the breath mean? And then in combination with this, I wanted to figure out what is the, from a musical perspective, what is the role of harmony in my music? Which is, a, which is something I've been trying to avoid for many years because in Arab music, there's, there's not really such a thing as harmony, uh, especially when you compare it to functional tertian harmony in Western music. So this was my question. So it was this combination of, in the musical side, what does harmony mean? And really try to answer that, don't avoid it. <laughs> and then at the same time, what is my response to the pandemic as an artist? Uh, how can I implement this in the piece? So it's these two things together. Um, that really shaped the way that this piece grew.
there's like this kind of strange, like not just the ocean, literally, but also a cultural difference in the way that we approach music in the U.S. versus how we approach, uh, I mean, contemporary classical music in Europe. So to be part of Gudamus, which is like, to me at least, I've heard of Gudamus for like the last 10 years uh, as being like the ma like one of the major, major festivals to learn about what's going on in general in Europe, uh, culturally speaking. Uh, it's, it's a really big learning opportunity for me, actually. I just expect to be surprised. I expect to be enamored, I suppose. Uh, uh, and I expect to have a good time. <laughs> so that's the way I'm trying to approach uh, life in general these days.